crossing over uh, Southwest 175th Street, Northeast 34th Street, and then also Northern Portland Avenue as it uh, moves along towards the east now, generally maybe a little north of east at about 30 miles per hour, but a well-formed tornado as you can see, and uh, this is rapidly evolving into a dangerous situation. Let's talk about the timing of this now. The storm is most likely on its current uh, track and speed, most likely going to be in the Moore area at 315. So that's coming up in 15 minutes. Folks, that gives you 15 minutes to prepare for a possible tornado coming your way. Uh, also, Clothier, probably about 322 Central Time. This storm is going to be moving in and uh, it is, again, rapidly developing. We are seeing a more robust rotational signature on the radar picture, and certainly the video is bearing that out as well. We're seeing a very well-defined uh, tornado now on the southwest side of this supercell thunderstorm, and that is now located right along 44 and maybe just a little east of that. We're awaiting a new radar scan, and uh, here's a look at the high-resolution radar. You can see that circulation there crossing I-44. Let's go over to uh, Max 7 and take a look at it right there. Uh, here's the latest uh, radar scan uh, showing you again a very, very robust velocity couplet, much more well-defined than it was just moments ago, and right along 44, which is right in here, and again, moving just a little bit to the north of east. So folks, again, in Moore and Norman, get ready. We've got a big storm that is uh, uh, moving in right now. Guys, over to you. All right, thanks. Thanks so much, Carl. As we continue to watch these live pictures from KFOR, they're up in the air over Newcastle, Oklahoma. We've seen power flashes. This is a dangerous large tornado that may actually be growing in size and may actually getting even better organized. As you can see there, it is quite large as it is. And Kelly reports uh, that there may be a debris ball on the radar right now, indicating it is doing damage. It's near the Newcastle Casino at this time. Um, the helicopter pilot who is, is who is on in the air right now looking at this tornado saying it's getting bigger it's getting wider it's becoming more violent so please if you live in this area or near more oklahoma please get to shelter immediately it looks like it's becoming more rain wrapped at this time it's huge it's a huge tornado and it may be getting rain wrapped and hard to see so please if you're on the path of this get to your safety shelter right now your safe house where you need to go right now now it's northeast of the high school near Newcastle and it's fixing to cross Interstate 44 and it's huge it's wide right. it's a big tornado and it's going to be capable of producing a lot of damage and hopefully folks are seeking shelter at this time this is just south of Oklahoma City it is moving toward the northeast at 20 miles per hour not only a tornado as you're seeing right now live but tennis ball hail is expected with this storm as well so again as Kim mentioned more Oklahoma an area hard hit by tornadoes in the past, as well as Newcastle, where it is right now, Valley Brook. You should be seeking shelter right now, lowest level of your home or business, and away from the windows. And you can see right there from these live pictures of KFOR, this is a large tornado. All right, we're going to go back to Carl Parker now. And Carl, um, KFOR reporter was saying there could be a debris ball on the radar. Are you seeing that right yeah, now? Yeah, we definitely are seeing that. Do you see this ball? Uh, I'll show you this on the radar picture right here. Uh, that ball, uh, that is uh, most definitely the area right there where the storm is now picking up debris. Now, uh, there are different modes that we can look at. One of them is called the uh, correlation coefficient. You notice the black area right there is now in effect for Cleveland, McLean, and Oklahoma County. Danielle Dozier, go. On 149th and South May. Hey, we're at, a hundred, we're at 149th and South May. Just saw a power flash in the sky, Damon. This is a large, violent tornado. It is moving to the northeast, and we... It's moving pretty much straight east. We're, we're looking at it right now. It's <laughs> moving to the east-northeast generally, but, I mean, if you are in more, I would go ahead and get underground right now. Violent tornado, and this thing is kicking up debris. We just zoomed in. We saw the debris. Now, of course, the trees are a little bit in the way, so you can't see it actually at the ground, but this is definitely causing a lot of damage and right Damon now. Damon and Rusty, the thing that I would uh, I would caution everybody on, it, everyone, the storms we saw yesterday, they would produce a tornado and it would come back, uh, it would go back up. This one has gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. We have not seen any weakening at all. It just seems to be getting bigger. That really concerns me about the long, how long this thing is going to be on the ground. It's headed into the south part 
parts of Oklahoma City just seeing some power flashes along the base of that so it's hitting power lines over there uh, probably approaching May Avenue we're going to need to get out of here because it's going to come uh, just a little too close to where okay. we're okay yeah Chris so right along southwest 149th street that is in Oklahoma City southwest 149th street as it moves into Moore becomes southwest 19th street we're talking about Moore City limits streets between southwest 19th and 4th street in the Oklahoma City area southwest 134th street and 149th street south to 164th street this is a tornado emergency you need to be below ground immediately you need to be below ground immediately now is the time to go into your tornado shelter we are not here to scare you but this is a very large tornado and we want you to understand the tone that we are using right now as a very serious situation a life-threatening situation as we have this large tornado on the ground we hear the tornado sirens they are going off you need to take these tornado uh, sirens seriously take our warnings very seriously again a large tornado is moving now in the western cleveland county rusty uh, damon i have this tornado going over the river as we speak i do believe it is starting to turn more east we get these large tornadoes they become right turners they head more dewy so right now i have it just south of southwest 149th street let me say this and i'm going to say this with as as serious as i've ever said in the seven years i've been here if you are not underground on the path of this storm you are endangering your life this yeah. is the kind of tornado that is going to be coming into the western sides of moore you have to okay. be out of the path of this tornado okay and for all parents of moore the students and the moore school limits are being held at school and they are putting them in their shelters do not go to the moore public schools to pick up your children they are being being held in school and they are going to be uh, placed in their designated tornado shelters within the school right along southwest 149th street right down Penn Avenue Western Avenue as you move into more again this is a large tornado that is coming in chance cold iron go uh, Damon, this is a, this is going I've got the exact location of the tornado is going to be just to the south of 149th Street over Dewey right now. Okay, I am detecting debris in this storm with our radar. You can see the radar on the right-hand side of your television screen there. That pink shading that you see right there, that is debris that is in this storm. So this is a large, violent tornado. A tornado emergency has been issued for Cleveland County and southern Oklahoma County, although as this storm turns more right, this is going to stay more in the Cleveland County here. So right along southwest 149th Street, I am detecting some significant debris within this tornado right here from our radar. And again, southwest 149th Street turns into southwest 19th Street into more. That would put it on the track that would take it into the street where we have a Dick's Sporting Goods, Walmart. Uh, we have the, uh, the, that will be just south of the Warren Theater. Again, this is going to be moving into the West Moore community right along southwest 149th Street. Brad. I mean, you just mentioned something very important. Folks that are driving right now listening to us on the Cumulus broadcast stations, 104.9 The Wild, Bob FM, The Sports Animal, The Cat. If you're in your car, do not seek shelter in a large box store. A Walmart, a Lowe's, a Home Depot is not a sturdy shelter. Something smaller, something sturdy, and do not get under an underpass. Damon. Absolutely not. Uh, again, this is a uh, anyone who is trying to rush home right now, again, we have a very large, a dangerous tornado that is moving into western parts of Cleveland County right now. Here's a tornado right here from our radar vantage.
vantage point. Okay, this right here, this pink shading, the tornado is just southwest of, uh, just south of Southwest 149th Street. You can see we've got our radar signatures, these rings spinning around, and this right here, this is going to be debris right here. This is Southwest 149th. This is Southwest 134th Street. As this is in the Oklahoma City limits, these streets are then renamed as they move into Moore. This right here is going to be known as Fourth Street and Moore. This right here is 19th Street and Moore. If you are now in your tornado shelters, or if you haven't done so yet, go into your shelters and more. You can watch us on our KOCO Tornado app. You can watch our live streaming coverage. We will tell you when it is safe to get out of your shelter, but right now we continue to have a very large, dangerous tornado moving into western Cleveland County. Chris Lee. Yeah. Yeah, Damon, we are, uh, we just went to 134th and Penn. There's no power. I'm looking at his neighborhoods. Uh, obviously, it's still light, so we just as they see lights, but I don't see a whole lot of electricity. I'm thinking maybe these areas are out. Get me some power plants. They'll come across, uh, across I-44 there. Uh, uh, we're seeing, uh, we were seeing quite a bit of debris being picked up. Uh, we're now approaching 100 and, uh, 134th and Western, and there is uh, there no power here either. Um, so a lot of power out in this area uh, already. And uh, so if you're counting on on that sort of thing for your warning, that's uh, that's what you need to be concerned about. It's, we're kind of running away from it, okay. a little bit ahead of it, and it's it's back behind us towards Bay Avenue and 149. All right, Chris. All right, we're continuing to track a very dangerous tornado and looking at reflectivity within that and the velocity right there. We're still talking about it. Looks like they're rusty. Is that 160 mile per hour uh, gate to gate? It's at least, Damon. At uh, least. You're looking at you're looking at probably 160 to 180. There, yeah. the comparison easily goes to the two tornadoes yesterday. Yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, th this looks on radar to be an EF4. Uh, it, it, it could even it could even be an EF5. You know, it's it's close. The winds are are extremely strong. This is a very violent tornado. I have it right now. It just crossed I-44 again, by the way. So it crossed okay. I-44. It is now uh, tracking along Southwest 149th. The path is still just north of east, but it is beginning to turn a little bit okay. more on uh, to a, a due east uh, track. What mode are we in right now? This is what we call what our F5 mode. Okay, this good. is going to allow us to pick up the strongest winds. Uh, we can pick up winds uh, of an EF5 tornado. Awesome. And again, right now, what I'm looking at are, are winds that are at least an EF4. Okay. I'm picking up uh, uh, quite a bit of debris within this tornado right now. So we continue this right here. To a a uh, tornado emergency has been uh, has been issued for Cleveland County. So you can see the amount of reflectivity you have in there, or the amount of velocity we have there. Let's go back over to reflectivity. Rusty, let's go back over to reflectivity here. There is a tornado on the right-hand side of your television screen. Uh, look how large that is. This is a tornado right here. So the tornado is right along 149th Street. This will become 19th Street and more. So we're talking Nothing. about those right along uh, the Moore Athletic Club. All right, the Moore Athletic Club there, Golf and Athletic Club, uh, the Dick Sporting Goods, the Walmart, Stone Meadows Community, Westmore. As you make your way a little bit farther east, we're talking about those that are right along the western part of the access road there. So we're looking at now, uh, we're going to have the Warren Theater, the Walmart, we're going to have uh, all these community centers that are just right along in between 119th and 134th. This eventually becomes 4th and 19th Street right here. The tornado right here is now right over Southwest 149th Street. That is going to be still in the Oklahoma City metro limits, but that will eventually turn into Indian Hills Road. Um, oh, that's going to no, I'm sorry, that's going to become Southwest 34th Street and more. So we're still tracking this very large tornado. You can see a very large tornado, a tornado emergency. This tornado is right over Southwest 149th. It is getting ready to approach Western Avenue. This is going to be right here, the Canadian River. Large tornado. It looks like this tornado may have jogged just a, a scotch down to the south here, uh, but it's still right along uh, 134th and 149th. And again, 134th becomes 19th Street as it moves into more, which is going to be right here. So this is going to be
19th Street and more. And again, this is going to be Southwest, uh, Southwest 34th Street. Southwest 34th Street and more. South 19th Street and more. Right here, 149th Street. So again, those of us that are anywhere between the Oak Ridge Elementary School, if you are near the Moore Golf and Athletic Club, Westmore Trails Park, the community of Stone Meadows, right along Western and right near Westmore, and as you approach the Orr Family Farm, again, the Orr Family Farm, you are all in the path of this dangerous tornado. Rusty. Damon, I literally have it right over Pennsylvania and Southwest 149th. You can see that, that region where we don't have any reflectivity. We call it a bounded weak echo region. That is indicative of the most intense tornadoes. When our, when our radar uh, picks up that signature, it shows you just how, uh, how strong the winds are within this. Uh, the outside area, that's more than likely debris. We have had reports already of uh, extensive damage on the northern sides of Newcastle uh, with this tornado. Okay, uh, absolutely. No surprise about that. Again, this is, uh, we continue our coverage right here. I'm depicting a lot of debris being wrapped up within this tornado. And again, uh, it looks like this tornado continues to be uh, right over 149th Street. This is Southwest 149th Street. And again, this will eventually become uh, Southwest 34th Street as you move into more. Chance Cold Iron, go ahead, go. Okay, David, uh, uh, tornado is on 149, just crossed it. Uh, moving forward, over towards Bay. It's a uh, hard snow pipe tornado. Um, it's in the shaft four category or higher. It's doing major, major structural damage. Um, everything back to the west of that storm is down. Uh, I-44 is closed to the people on the east door up towards I-35. It's underground. This tornado's not anything to mess with. No. We're coming up all day right here. I'll get this shot, Damon. Okay, so, the, so Southwest, okay, this is Southwest 149th Street, Southwest 134th Street. If you're familiar with this area, there's a McDonald's right here or Family Farm, Southwest 149th Street. The tornado is now crossing right over Penn Avenue, moving more to the east. Again, anyone that is uh, within the uh, Walmart, there's a Walmart on 19th Street and more. There's a tornado on the right hand side of your television screen there. If you are at the, uh, within the Walmart, Walmart on 19th Street and more. If you are near the Dick Sporting Goods on uh, on 19th Street, if you live near the Home Depot, the Moore Golf and Athletic Club, uh, you are in the path of this tornado. You need to be below ground. You can see the tornado on the right-hand side of your television screen. Again, that is right here over Southwest 149th Street. And again, that becomes South 34th Street and more. That is going to be one block north, one street north of Indian Hills Road and more. Danielle Dozier, go. Hey, Damon. Yeah, we are still following this tornado. The stream that you're looking at right now, we're actually driving to the east trying to get away from it, but we're coming up on, it looks like, Wilson Boulevard and Markwell Avenue, and the storm... We lose Danielle. Danielle. Okay. And South 134th, Chris Lee is telling me another exact location. And the storm is actually behind us. It is a still large tornado. Debris is evident flying in the air. People in more need to be underground right now if they are not already. Uh, Chris Lee is taking the camera right now, trying to point it towards the tornado. Again, we are trying okay. to get safely east of this thing right now, but we're still staying on top of it, David. Okay, and you can see right here with our high resolution sure. mapping, we have plenty of neighborhood developments right here. Lots of uh, high density neighborhoods, so this is moving into a very dense part now of more. It was moving through uh, southwestern parts of the metro here where it wasn't nearly as dense, but now we are getting closer to I-35. This tornado is going to pass right over I-35 here, and eventually it's going to right on 19th Street there. Okay, uh, Rusty, can we put some uh, some more street locators on there? I, I can't, uh, I believe that's going to be 19th Street and more right there. Uh, again, 19th Street and more Westmore Trails Park the community of Stone Meadows, Westmore, Southwest 19th Street. That's going to be right where they have the, the Home Depot. There is a Walmart. There is going to be uh, a Buffalo Wild Wings on the west-hand side there, a Lewis Jewelers. All of you, you need to be in your tornado shelter immediately. Chance Cold Iron, you're live now. Go ahead, go.
crash uh, west uh, west uh, uh, street uh, park and, uh, street uh, 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 lane, south uh, robinson uh, vicky drive southwest 158 is where it is right now it is heading up for yule drive southwest to 17 terrace and then going up toward the i-35 the west Theater theater is now on the outer edge of the debris ball. Ball. John, can you, push in? can you push it in a little bit? What is it? No, Mike, we, we can't. Uh, I'm out of it right now. We're pushing as high as we can. We'll start pushing in. We're going to start losing texture. And it's moving, uh, moving, moving. I'm seeing the flashes. Uh, Direction north and south. The end of the road is coming down well in the path of this Plato. Okay, yeah, so once again, okay, so here we are here. This is going to be, uh, let's see, Santa Fe here. Uh, this right here is going to be I-35 right here. That is going to be 19th, uh, right there. Uh, let's, let's go, Rusty, I, let's see here. That's going to be 134th Street. Uh, this right here is going to be 19th Street. All right, here we go. So 19th Street and more, all right? So this right here is going to be, there's a Walmart right here. There is going to be a PetSmart right here, 4th Street. Tornado moving right over. This is going to be density area right here. We we have a uh, we have a Lowe's. I'm sorry, the Lowe's is right here. Home Depot is right here. Dick Sporting Goods right here. Okay, and this is going to be the tornado right here. This is going to cross over. This is going to cross over 19th Street here and, uh, and make its way right over I-35. Again, this is a very large tornado. A very large tornado. Uh, you can see it there uh, on the on the right hand side of your television screen. But here, this is Fourth Street. This is going to be 19th Street right here. This is moving. Moving into more. Looks like the last radar scan may have just barely nudged it a little bit. Let me get this skid out of the way. But this feeder band is continuing to lower. It's getting bigger. This thing has a ton of energy and it's still tracking, like you said, straight towards uh, the east. Uh, if it does cross there at 4th Street, uh, you know you're going to continue to go over. You got Eastern and Bryant. A lot of housing additions over here uh, that are going to get hit including my house, which is right in the middle of the path that it's taken right now. So uh, I've called my family, made sure they're in their tornado shelter. Let's go to uh, Emily Sutton's you know, stream. Plan, so. John, this is Emily Sutton here. Go, Emily. Mike, Mike, we're about to get in the path of this tornado. We're dropping south. Major, major, major wedge on the ground. It looks like this, this looks like May 3rd. Oh, my gosh, we've got a blast south. We were on exit 19. <laughs> and we have been watching it, southwest 19th, we're getting sideways rain, we're blasting south now. This now is, it's a, mi it's a mile and a quarter wide debris ball, uh, looking at radar, it's a mile and a quarter wide and it runs from south 16th street down to south 166th, a mile and a quarter. And it's now going to cross. The Warren Theater is on the northern side of the debris ball. It's turned due east, going right down 119th. The heaviest debris is on 119th, and it is absolutely thick debris, as you would imagine, with an F4 Tornado Plus going through more right now. You cannot survive this if you're below ground. It is also heading up. May go as far north as Moore High School, but may go just south. Pieces of debris. For more high school, but more high school is in immediate danger as well. So, this is very that would be a lot of the municipalities around downtown more. Let's go back so to John Welch and Bob Hill. Uh, feeder band is continuing to lower, continuing to grow. Yeah, Mike, we're kind of losing it right now in this rank, and we're still seeing a lot of power flashes. But right down over Cedar Road, actually I'm over Sunny the rain that's, that's wrapped it up, or the debris ball that just made it so hard to see. We're losing a lot of light here, so that's why everything's dark. Uh, feeder band is continuing to lower, continuing to grow. This thing is not letting up from what we're seeing here on the air. Uh, um, right now, I'm over Sooner Road. Park, if you make your way to Sooner Road, I know the communities, the creeks. Oh, shoot back towards the Rock Creek. Um, you are in the path of this. Again, if you live at the creeks of Wimberley or Rock Creek, you need to be in your tornado shelter immediately. Again, this tornado, it is still on the west side of I-35. It is passing right over, uh, just near uh, the Warren Theater area. This is in between 4th and 
19th Street. Again, if you live in uh, on the east side now of I-35 here, looking here, it looks like we are likely going to have this tornado continue to pass right over I-35. So now we are talking about there's a Walmart neighborhood market right along 4th Street. You are in the path of this storm. There is going to be an Arvis Bank. You are in the path of this storm. That is right along 4th Street. The Cleveland County Health Department is right there on 4th Street. You are all part of this storm. Chance Cold Iron, you're on the you're on the phone. David, I think the World Medical Center took a direct hit of this tornado. It's now rain It was a quarter to a half mile wide before we lost it. It looks like it's going uh, going to come right down 4th Street. I have uh, just passed. Uh, East Central Elementary uh, on 4th Street got debris, large chunks of debris falling a half a mile in front of this tornado. But uh, you can't see it. Do not go down I 35 from Oklahoma City. Just get off. Anybody from Aurora, Midwest City, Dell City need to stay out of the way of this tornado. You cannot see it at all. This car is causing major damage. But anybody along 4th Street, up through 12th Street, 89th Street, in Aurora, Moore High School, all around that area needs to be in their shelters right now. Okay, yeah, and again, this is crossing right over I-35. Rusty, go. Damon, I do have it jogging a little bit more northeast. It had tracked right across 149th, but now as it's gotten to I-35, it's actually jogged just a little bit northeast. These tornadoes, they have minds of their own. They're not going to take a straight path. They will wobble back and forth as they cycle, uh, so expect kind of a east-northeast turn. Let me also say this. Again, you are risking your life if you're not below ground in the path of this tornado. So be below ground if you can. If you can't, you have to be at the lowest level as you can. You have to be out of a mobile home. You need to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get the tornado app that we have. Also, if you don't have a smartphone with you, turn your TV all the way up, but get in a closet. Damon and I yeah. will be very specific on everything. Damon, mm -hmm. The last thing we want people doing is sitting in their living rooms right now watching the TV as yeah. this tornado is heading to them. This is how life-threatening this situation is. We are not here to scare you. We are not trying to put fear, but we want you to know how serious of a storm this is. This is a tornado emergency for Moore. This is where the uh, Moore was the birthplace of the tornado emergency back in 1999. So right here, this is going to be the Moore Medical Center that Chance was just talking about. This right here, this is Telephone Road. This is where the Warren Theater is. This is where the... It's shrinking in any size. It's growing. Going, and uh, it's continuing to come almost straight east, just grinding, ripping everything up in its sights. Uh, the inflow at times is probably 80 miles an hour where we've been at. Uh, we're trying to hold, we'll kind of spin around here and hold the hover and give you just a little bit better shot. But uh, within a matter of minutes, this thing is sucking us in and we're a mile away than where we used to be. So there it is. You can kind of see it on the ground, just the texture of it. Um, so uh, it, 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 everything's getting completely wrapped in rain. I'm not seeing any power flashes at this time, but uh, it appears just from our vantage point that uh, if it's still on the ground, it's going to be right, right over the uh, the Moore High School right there on uh, Eastern there, Mike. Okay, appreciate that. It, it is stalled out. It is stalled out, and uh, I, I would. I, it's still very much on the ground, and I'm not going to say that it's lifting. However, uh, it is the debris appears to be spreading out, and the velocities are coming down. So the tornado itself is weakening. It is not lifted, but the tornado is still back in all of this debris. This is all debris, fog, and rain because it's been going through more as a large one mile wide plus with a two and a quarter mile wide debris ball, huge debris ball. It is back in here with all this debris that is up in the air from the neighborhoods in Moore. So that's what we have right now. Let's go to the storm tracker and you can... There it is, power flashes. Let's go back. Sorry, let's go back. You saw the power flashes. It's just the core of the tornado just is on the east side out of Interstate 35 right now. There it is still back in there. It looks like it went through some type of cycle and the tornado is a little bit more in the middle left hand part of your screen and that is located, I, I see a lot of debris in the air from the Warren Theater uh, area. The whole Warren Theater area, I see a lot of very heavy, heavy debris in the air that has plumed up in the past couple of minutes from all the shopping areas at the Warren Theater. No doubt out there is tremendous destruction at that location right now. I'll go John Welsh. Yeah, there it is, Mike. As you can see, the, the 
the uh, as you talked about, whenever you cross I-35 eastbound, you're going to come into uh, or on Eastern, or I'm sorry, on. Uh, you know, 134th Street, about where that is at, you're going to see a lot of uh, shops, a lot of small buildings, and uh, then after you cross Eastern, you're going to get to another neighborhood area. So right, right now, if, if, if it is where we think it is, it's in, uh, uh, you know, some residential or some uh, shopping areas. Uh, prior to coming in, once it crosses Eastern, it's going to be back into the heavy uh, housing addition areas. But as you can see, we're, I've kind of advanced pretty, not pretty far, about three miles to the east, and tons of power flashes gives us a little bit better shot. We can get some more ambient light on the back side of that storm and just show you just the uh, the wedge, or the form of it. And as you can see, it kind of goes, it funnels out. It's got a pretty big lowering, and then we can almost make out just a little V-shape in the very bottom of it where that tornado is physically on the ground just destroying power lines and everything that is in way. As you can see, the uh, big power flashes there. It's continuing to track east. Um, and Mike, th this is fixing to get in a bad area because we're coming right back into housing housing additions and uh, more of the residential part of town here. And look at that power flash on the far right of your screen. If you look in there, take a look at that. It's uh, a way out there. So the wind in front of this thing has got to be just whipping. So th this thing is definitely something not to play with. Uh, and we're going to stay here and we'll keep following it. I'm fixed to have to make a turn so the skids are going to be in the shot for just a second. But uh, otherwise we're going to get too far away. But that's it right there going through more. A huge, huge tornado there, Mike. South 19th. Okay, so what it has done is it, it looks like it went from a wedge to a barrel. Now it's back to a wedge again is what it did. It is, it is on the southeast side of Westmore High School right now. Uh, very, excuse me, Moore High School. It's on the east side of Moore High School and that is going to be in the east central sections of Moore right now. So it, uh, it has hit the Warren Theater Complex. Now it is a mile to the east, southeast of Moore High School is where it is. We're talking about Sunny Lane and Bryant, Bryant Sunny Lane and Sooner at uh, at about uh, South Fourth Street and North Twelfth Street. It could go up to the, near the GM plant and it could go up to near Tinker Air Force Base. Recall the May third tornado made a hard north turn and went up to Hudeburg Drive and I forty. We don't know if this will do the same thing, but it is now east of, of Moore High School at Sunny Lane Sooner and South 4th and North 12th Street. Go John Welsh. Yeah, well, hey, I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly where this is. This is right in my house. It's crossing right now, uh, Bryant, just north of 12th Street. We're getting some highlights of some flashes in there, and they're, uh, 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 they're uh, antennas right there that are just north of 12th Street. That's where we're hitting. It looks like, from our vantage point, it's right there. It looks like it's kind of weakened a little bit as Travis was kind of push in there. It's still tracking straight east, it looks like, on 12th Street, um, where you have, it's fixing to cross, uh, if it hasn't already, it's crossing Bryant, it's fixing to cross Sunny Lane, and then it's going to hit that bend in Sooner Road where they made the annex for the, uh, the, the proposed lake that they made years ago. That's where it's headed right now, straight east. And it looks like it's over 12th Street. Uh, we're still getting tons of power flashes. The power flashes way in front of this storm. Um, I'm let's go to the uh, let's go to the North Doppler control room. We'll show you exactly where it is. The tornado's right here. There's Sunny Lane. Here's Sooner, and this is going to be uh, uh, 12th and 4th Street. There's Moore High School. So it's uh, exactly two miles now due east of Moore High School on Sunny Lane, uh, heading up for uh, Sooner. You see it clearly right there. And here's the GM plant. There's Tinker Air Force Base. This is Midwest and Douglas uh, Boulevard. So still very much on the ground, still quite large uh, in the next neighborhood of one half mile wide right now. Go John Welsh. Yeah, there it is, Mike. It's fixing to come across uh, what, uh, what appears to be Sunny Lane and 12th Street. Uh, we're trying to get a little bit of distance here. Look at all that debris in the air. I mean, that debris, it's its five or 600 feet up in the air, and it's going. So uh, it's still grinding, it's still on the ground. Um, it's, it, man, it, it's, it is really ripping, and it's probably right now about half a mile to uh, three quarters of a mile from crossing uh, Sunny or Sooner Road. So it's on Sooner Road. If everybody's got a map, you 
Kind of see that bend in there. That that bend was for the annex for the second lake right next to uh, Lake Stanley Draper. So it's coming right along this way. It looks like it's on track if it stays right here eastbound to go right through the center of Hefner Lake. Um, let's, get, let's get out of the shot there. But you can see this thing is grinding. It's ripping. And uh, we're getting power flashes all the way down to like 149th Street here. So this thing, it might have weakened just momentarily recycled. But it's back down on the ground and it is grinding. As you can see from our shot, it's probably an eighth of a mile right there from crossing Sooner Road. So Sooner Road and 134th Street, uh, it is fixing to be where it's exactly at. It's fixing to barrel across and it's going to come into the uh, some pretty much vacant land as it comes to the uh, the annex part of the lake and heads right towards Draper and uh, Tinker Air Force Base. There, Mike. Centered right now between. Sunny Lane and Sooner uh, at, at North 4th, North 4th, uh, due east of Moore High School. Uh, let's take the storm tracker. Uh, where is this headed? You see, it is a giant barrel with a massive debris cloud, and it is heading for uh, south side of Tinker, Draper, over towards Stella, Choctaw, Nuala, Hara, Twin Lakes, McLeod, and uh, the Casino, Dale, uh, over here to the east. So it's going to clip. It's going to move into southeast. Eastern Oklahoma County, red line center line for New Walla, red line center line for New Walla. Could go as far north as Harris, still could turn up to the Tinker Diagonal on the southeast sides of Midwest City. Back to Bob Moore Chopper 4. Go, John. Yeah, there it is, Mike. It's fixing to cross Sooner Road right now, and uh, it's coming into that annex part of the lake that they annex. So, luckily for the, for the time being, there's not, there, there are very few houses in here, if any, I don't think. I think the city's bought most of them out. But uh, it's continuing to track straight east, and as you can see, this thing hasn't uh, decreased in size any. Uh, and I'm actually kind of getting a little closer than I want to be to it right now. But this thing is sucking us in at uh, about 50 to 60 miles an hour right now. I'm tracking it. The inflow uh, is still huge. That in It's sucking all that energy. Um, but it's still continuing, tracking straight east. It looks like it's crossed uh, Sooner, yeah, Sooner Road. It's down in that valley. There's a there's a couple big creeks in this uh, area that it's in, in this Annex Lake. So you, uh, typically, these, storm, these storms, these tornadoes are going to find the path of least resistance. They're going to stay in all that low ground. And so it's going to come up here. And there's the water tower and the water treatment plant that is on the southeast side, or the southwest side of Lake Draper. It appears at this time it's going to go just north of that. And it's going to continue to track uh, over the top of that so we'll see what it does when it crosses the lake but uh, it's continuing to rip and grind all these trees up as it's crossed sunny lane continuing to go eastbound towards uh, draper and it looks like it's going to be about uh, north of 149th street here mike uh, indeed and it's uh now it's approaching air depot it's approaching air depot air depot uh and we're getting pretty a little closer to south 89th street uh, we're down there at about uh, 120 120 south, uh, 130th south, uh, but it is now uh, between uh, Sooner and Air Depot, and it is going to go over the northern or central parts of Draper Lake uh, here coming up. Go, John. Going it out a little bit. Hey, look at, uh, I got to move here real quick. Hey, but while, while I'm flying away from it, look at it, Mike. It's lightening up. Wow. It's becoming more of a barrel shaped. It's, uh, the wedge has decreased a little bit. It's slowly turning. Uh, it almost looks like it's turned to the south east so I'm breaking away from it as fast as I can because it's getting a little closer for my comfort but uh, it's definitely it's changed shaped it's barreled it's gotten a little higher the base is rised um, the base is probably about 13 to 1400 feet above the ground so it's just three or four hundred feet below me and uh, as you can see it's got a definite cone shaped on it and it appears that it's turned to the southeast so at this time just from our vantage point and uh, just kind of trying to triangulate the way it's going to move, it appears that it's going to hit that water treatment plant on the southwest side of Draper. So uh, if you are in this area, I believe it's uh, like the Draper uh, 74th Street, I, I think is what it is. If you're in that area, definitely uh, seek caution. If you're going to be south of Draper, on the east side of Draper, you need to be in your shelter. This thing is not light. It's not uh, letting up. It's actually looks like it's decreased a little bit. We've lost, uh, I think, a lot of the debris, so it kind of changed the shape of it. It gave it more of a, 
a, a barrel shaped and not as much of a structure. So you can actually see the shape of the tornado now because the only thing that it's got to rip up right now is trees. We're not getting all the construction debris that we had earlier that actually appears to give it a wider base than it is. But uh, it's continuing to rip. Uh, it's kind of got a big, uh, like a truck down, and then it kind of has a little V funnel right there, tracking straight for 149th Street uh, in the southwest side of Draper Lake, right towards the water treatment plant at this time. And it's really, it's really fizzling out as we're seeing. I'm going to do another turn here. I'm getting kind of far away. But uh, it looks like it's roping out a little bit. And it, this is over like 149th Street and uh, maybe just the east side of Air Depot Road. There it is. It's gone, Mike. So let's see. Well, we're going to stay right here. We're going to see if it recycles. But it's completely roped out. Uh, or it's continuing to rope out as we speak right now. And it looks like it's roping out at Air Depot Road and uh, I'm going to say 134th Street right in that area. So, man, look at that rope on that thing. It's yeah, it, it's, it's going to dance right here right for there. a while. Uh, the whole updraft there is constricting and shrinking. It's going to sit there and dance for a while. The wind in that still could be F4 criteria, but it's just literally about 100 feet wide now. Uh, and the vortex is well, likely can... still on the ground, but it, it roped out mighty fast, but still uh, likely a vortex on the ground. And look how the debris... Yeah, the debris ball is just spinning uh, at about 100 miles an hour all the way around that rope. Oh, just right there to hit us. Yeah, Mike, hey, the, uh, the, as you can see, it's roped out. Look at the very top as tra Travis will back out and go up to the top of the, uh, the the top of the base there. You can see the whole base is continuing to rotate. The, uh, the swirls and the rain is still cyclonic. It's still moving with it. So, uh, you know, I don't know if this thing is recycling for another round, but... The, uh, the inflow, that feeder band is lowered. It's uh, continuing to, looks like, suck in moisture. So this thing could just cycle for a moment and set back down. But uh, uh, again, right now, I'm over, uh, I'm just south of, I'm a, uh, at 164th and Air Depot Road, shooting pretty much straight to the north, northwest, uh, where that tornado just roped out there. The feeder band is still there. Feeder band looks like it's, uh, it's still pretty low to the ground. It's way lower than we are. Um, so so we'll just stay here and uh, continue to watch it as these scud clouds continue to rotate pretty much where that band uh, just broke free there, Mike. Let's go to the uh, storm tracker. Let's go to the storm tracker. This is where that uh, tornado, uh, we may have lifted, might still be a little rope on the ground, but Draper right now over to New Wall at 408, Hera at 414, Fire Lake Casino. And this might just be going through a uh, through a phase. Uh, we're going to have to see what happens if this uh, tornado moves right over. Maybe this rotation moves right over TLX. Uh, we're probably going to have to switch over some uh, so, some radar products there because we're going to have to still sample the data within this. So uh, we're watching. You can see the radar. Here it is right here. You can see how close we are. I mean, we're just a couple miles right here. This is going to be Lake Stanley Draper. This is the rotation right here. This is Sooner Road. So we are south of 240 here. We are now east of Sooner Road. And you can see this is the rotation associated with this storm. This is a very large tornado that moved through more. All right, more. You can now come out of your uh, tornado shelters. Again, you can come out of your tornado shelters. For those of us in more, this storm is now east. Again, this is now east. Uh, but once again, uh, we continue to track this. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, this this significant rotating thunderstorm. It looks like uh, we can officially confirm that the tornado has roped out. That means that it's decreased significantly. Significantly, just west of Lake Stanley Draper. Just west of Lake Stanley Draper. Rusty. That's what I'm seeing, Damon, on the on the radar. I'm still tracking that center of circulation for you into Pottawatomie County, simply because you never know if this thing is going to wrap back up again. Uh, this is a large supercell. The supercells yesterday produced tornadoes for several hours. Uh, so I've got that center of circulation probably now beginning to slide north again. So we're more of kind of an east-northeast track. I've got it at Nuala at 418, McLeod at 431, and the Midway area at 436. If we can go back to Advantage Doppler HD, guys, just one more look at, at the storm from HD. I do have the, the circulation right now on the northern sides of Lake Stanley Draper uh, between southeast 104th and southeast 119th. That means it's headed towards southeast 89th. I also believe it's headed towards the intersection of I-40 and I-240, where, where we have the split. Getting reports of some golf ball size hail and even larger 
larger than that at Tinker Air Force Base. So on the northern side of this supercell, uh, north of I-240, there is going to be some very damaging uh, hail being produced out of it, Damon. Yeah, and I imagine that the, yeah, the north side has all the hail, uh, and that is your classic supercell, north side hail, and then you get the rotation on the southwest side of the storm. That's exactly what we're seeing. Chance Cold Iron, you are very familiar with more. What have you seen so far? Uh, David, I stayed in front of that tornado. It looked like everything from the south side of 4th Street all the way across from Santa Fe may be gone. Uh, the Warren Theater, the Medical Center, uh, the school there on 4th Street, the Walmart, my house. I think everything's gone from what the damage of the debris in the air that I've seen. I, I picked up a guy that was uh, a quarter mile north of 4th Street. He's checking on his dogs at his house, and he's with me now. I think his house is spared. But uh, they, they moved straight down 4th across by Eastern, uh, Turner. It went over like anticipated. We now have another, we have a, the same wall cloud here. Uh, it's starting to rotate pretty good again. Uh, but no trade on the ground as of now. Where's your hit my house? Okay, Chance. Okay, Chance. Well, uh, you know what, Chance? I want you to call your family. I know you live in Moore, as do I, so this is uh, very personal for us. Brad Souter. Uh, Damon, I want to give heads up to crews now, emergency crews that are responding to Moore. We have a new thunderstorm developing to the south and to the east of Moore, uh, south and west, excuse me, moving north and east. Right now, uh, it is not severe, nor is it producing uh, a tornado. But this is a storm. This is an environment. Environment that is extremely still favorable for thunderstorm genesis, for thunderstorm production. And we got to watch this closely because rescue crews are responding. Uh, people are out and about uh, for, uh, surveying the damage, looking at the damage. We don't want you to do that. Uh, power lines are down. Obviously, there's going to be massive damage in the Moore area, and there are more storms developing. I know in Oklahoma City right now, sirens are going off once again. I want to let folks know there is a that tornado warning is for the southeast side. It's still the Moore tornado. Uh, that's lifted, that's not currently on the ground, but the siren system is all tied together, and so folks are hearing sirens. Does that mean Oklahoma City is under the gun for uh, sirens, uh, for tornadoes? We've already seen the... You're on, Emily. Go we'll see if we can clear that phone line up. As you might imagine, there are tons of people on the phones, and the phone line are really garbled. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, the, uh, okay, there, this is Mike Bennett's shot right here. I believe this is Mike Bennett. Could be Emily. Uh, this is the, this is Bennett. Uh, this is the new, new cycle on this violent tornado that just tracked through Moore. And obviously there is, a, there is extensive widespread damage in Moore from, a, from at least that F4 tornado. Could have been an F5. This is the new cycle here. And and uh, this could develop into a new tornado very, very quickly. It's on the northeastern side of Draper Lake. Let's go back to Bob Moore, Chopper 4, live. Don't, don't talk to him. That's just his picture. We won't, we won't talk to him. He's trying to organize with other aircraft in the area. He is surveying the damage now and more. Uh, just join in, join in, John, when you have a minute. Uh, but this is the uh, aerials now from Moore. I saw it. And there's the Moore water tower. Go, John Welsh. I have no idea. You're on. Uh, can, hey, can you hear all right, Mike? Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, we're coming back in on the south of this track, and let me tell you where I'm at. I'm over 4th Street, and uh, I'm going to make a turn here. I'm over 4th Street and, and Bryant. There's that Veterans Memorial Park right there, and that is it's gone. Everything in it is gone. Um, we're going to take a look towards the, the uh, when Travis gets pulled back. Come back to your left, Travis. Come back to your left. And a little bit more to your left, and zoom in right there. All right, so right, right there to your left. That's the man. We're getting hit by some heavy rain. That right there is Veterans Memorial Park. If everybody knows where that at, for more, it's on Fourth and uh, Bryant. The housing addition to the left is going to be like Wimberley Creeks, I think. The uh, the two houses in are completely gone. Off to your right, uh, we're going to pan back towards the south, and uh, we have houses in that addition gone. We have the Moore Administration Building. It has some heavy damage done to the backside and the roof of it. The houses behind it are completely gone. The Brink Junior High School, just behind it, there's the uh, auxiliary, or the, uh, uh, I believe it's the uh, uh, gymnasium building. That building is completely trashed right there in the center, as you can see. The track from here, it went uh, just south of 4th Street, and it's 
going to go right towards the... Uh, I'm getting hit by some heavy rain here. It's going to be right towards the Walmart, the neighborhood market. The neighborhood market is on Southeast 4th and Easter. The track went just south of it, uh, and we're getting hit by some RFDs. The track went just south of it and went straight to the west, and it's going to cross uh, another housing addition right there. I believe it's Apple Creek, and it's going to come up on uh, passing, te not telephone road, passing a tower road, and it's going to cross the uh, train tracks there. From the train tracks, we're still in between 12th Street, we're between, we're between 19th Street and 4th Street. It went straight across there, hit those houses, it ran right along the highway, and looks like it went over, um, if you'll go to your, your right, Travis will go from Lowe's to the Warren Theater. Looks like it tracked just north of the uh, Warren Theater, and it, nope, it hit the Warren Theater, it hit the Bowling Alley, it hit the bank, it hit the post office, and right there on the corner is the Norman Regional uh, Health Care Center, it's the hospitals, right there on uh, 4th and Telephone Road. It hit that. We're going to continue to go to the west. We have several housing additions right here. We've got a trailer. A tra uh, as it moved through more, again, as, as I mentioned before, it's a place that I call home. Uh, this tornado passed, it looks like, just one street north of my house. So uh, you can certainly uh, imagine the emotions that I'm running through right now. But again, you can see here, large hail, just right along I-240, just north of I-40, and the rotation is right there. Rusty. All right, Damon, uh, you take a break, buddy. Uh, I, know, I know it's emotional for you, uh, obviously, and I know a lot of folks, we all know someone, I'm sure, who was impacted by this storm, uh, the pictures that are going to be coming out of Moore, uh, they're going to be very reminiscent of some of the uh, strongest tornadoes that we've ever seen in central Oklahoma because this, I can tell you right now from radar, this, this was at least an EF4. Uh, this was just in the same uh, line as the Shawnee and the Kearney tornadoes of yesterday. Let's talk about what's happening right now because we still do have two active tornado warnings. Let's go on over to Advantage Doppler 3D. We're still looking at the tornado warning. It is still in a effect for the quote-unquote more tornado. We do not have an actual tornado on the ground at this point in time, uh, but we are still watching this very closely. Chris Lee is still tracking that storm. Chris, you're on the phone. Let's get the latest from you on that. Yeah, we're at uh, 134th and North Choctaw Road heading back to the north. Uh, not seeing anything on the ground. Still have this large area of rotation. It's moving. Uh, it looks like it has moved past uh, Lake Stanley Draper now. It is moving, uh, not as, I, I thought maybe it would be crossing I-30. Completely destroyed as, as, uh, as kids run up to hopefully their loved ones. But this whole area right here, guys, is uh, it's completely destroyed. The houses are destroyed. Uh, they're completely leveled. We're gonna we're gonna just stay right here in this area. This is the hardest hit area. Police have uh, have folks stopped right here on Santa Fe, in between 19th Street and 4th Street. Um, this is this is by far the hardest hit area. As you can see, we've got more police out there uh, trying to find everybody or you know doing what they what they do best is rendering aid. And uh, all the kids are running. We'll stay here for a little bit and see. Um, if, if we get some damages or if we get some uh, a report of how everybody's doing, I'm just going to talk to you as, as we kind of stay on this shot. As we continue to look back towards the west, this whole area is just completely demolished. Every house in this area is leveled. I'm uh, fixing to cross. I'm just north of 149th Street, and uh, this whole area right here, this, this neighborhood, in between Santa Fe and Western, John, uh, can police you hear are me? driving through there looking for people. Yeah, I can hear you. Linda, can you hear me? Yes. John, we need to let people know that they're going to set up a search and rescue headquarters at the Warren Theater. We saw your video from before where it showed the Warren Theater was in relatively good shape compared to many of those buildings around that you're doing a terrific job of bringing home the misery that's happening right now. We need the prayers of everyone from Moore, Oklahoma again. Now, you're telling me that this is video of parents right. reuniting with their children. Uh, I'm told that that's a school in the background. Right you can see police officers all around. But There's look at the ground. 
on that shot hey, previously let, before let, let he let pulled out. Go ahead. Go ahead, John. Let me show you. Let me show you another school. It's right out my door, Travis. If you keep coming around, perfect. Now straight down, and to your left, right, right there. That's oh, another no. school, Linda. Oh my and, and that oh, one looks no. like. The, I don't know what to say. That one looks harder. Uh, it, it looks harder hit than any of them before. Oh my um, goodness. As a parent, this is kind of hard to report on. Oh, but, oh uh, we're gonna stay. We're going to stay in the air. We're going to show you. Um, I mean, these pictures tell everything. The Orr family farm. If you guys are familiar with that, it's going to be uh, what uh, it's like uh, on pen. I think at 149. Just right. At the left. And Travis, um, pull, is Travis, John, have Travis pull back into that school. Those appear to be the first people who've been able to make it to the scene, walking carefully through that debris. You see other people now, they're gathering. Of course, we're trying to find out if the kids were being sheltered there or someplace else. Our thoughts and prayers are with everybody in the Moore area. The devastation is complete. One of our cameramen called it atomic bomb-like devastation. It's just unbelievable. And, and again, we're trying to figure out right now, we're for the kids there and of course they're looking uh, right now looking for uh, we okay, hope they're on. not looking for fatalities or survivors we're hoping that the kids were gone but we're not sure at this point we're getting as much information in as we can second of right two now. schools destroyed in Moore Oklahoma along with a, a huge section of residential housing if we go back to those shots in the future you'll see that the ground literally is nothing but mud there is nothing Thing on the ground. It looks like May 3rd, what we yeah. saw on May 3rd of 1999. Go ahead. I'm being told, guys, that that uh, is the Plaza Towers Elementary School, so if you guys Plaza can find Towers. out. Okay. Uh, Plaza Towers, and uh, I'm unfor sure of this other school here. It's going to be on uh, like 149th and uh, in between Penn and Western. The Orr Family Farm, if you guys are familiar with that area, is right behind that. The, the family farm is trashed. Um, this whole area between these this between like um, Penn, you have uh, Western and Santa Fe. Those those three miles or those two miles sections right right there, um, guys. Everything is leveled for almost the whole mile. If we're just Travis is kind of showing you some some wide shots here. Uh, this is un unbelievable. And John, this is reminiscent Terrible of the damage. May third, nineteen ninety nine storm that moved through the Moore area and literally tore out entire. Neighborhoods and That's housing what it looked like. That's exactly and what it looked like. we're looking at the same thing right there. We pray to God that those people were somehow underground when that hit. On May 3rd, 1999, people were diving into manhole covers trying to get away from the storm if they, they didn't have underground shelter. Mike Morgan was warning these folks at least an hour, at least 30 minutes before the storm hit to leave the area if they did not have underground sheltering in place. We hope that that's the case. We hope the death toll does not resemble that May 3rd tornado. Mike, that was that the exact path of the May 3rd tornado? Was uh, that the... This was just, this, this was along the exact path and then as it came deeper into more, it's a little bit on the southern sides of the May 3rd path. Uh, it, and I don't want to make comparisons too much to May 3rd just in terms of well, what I'll say is this tornado is, I, th I believe, is wider, and and I think that you're, I think we're going to find that there are many more structures that have been hit compared to May 3rd from what you and I are seeing right now live from Bob Moore Chopper 4. Uh, May 3rd uh, took took some areas that, that weren't developed back in 1999 mm -hmm. through Moore. Uh, and it, I think the total uh, was 6,000 some odd structures that were damaged or destroyed. I believe the, the amount may be more with this particular tornado today. And you look at the that scene of destruction there and the small figures of those rescuers uh, working frantically here looking here it's just, where do you begin I mean that's the question where do you begin on something like this Mike how long was that tornado on the ground well it was on the ground for just under one hour uh, Linda it set down just southwest of uh, 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 west of Newcastle and then went to that large wedge uh, and I think the peak width on it was uh, about a mile and a half wide that's one thing that I'm noticing looking at these pictures is the debris path appears to be significantly wider uh, through more than May 3rd, 1999. And again, most of this path is just on the southern sides of the May 3rd path. We just saw somebody there uh, obviously in distress as any, any of us would be walking upon a scene like that uh, looking through the rubble.
there. Again, let us repeat that Warren Theater is going to be the staging area for search and rescue. We know that a lot of people are going into that area, but please, only people who are are supposed to be there in terms of search and rescue, fire departments, police, stay out of the area otherwise. It's nothing but dangerous and the police need their room to be able to get in there and try to save anybody who may be in that debris. And that, of course, right now is their utmost importance. Um, and again, we're looking at the Plaza Towers School is what we're being told that is. We do not know if the kids were in there or not. Um, we're hoping they weren't, of course, but we'll continue to try and get you more information on that. John's moving back around that is to a the other huge side. huge destruction path. But yeah, there's so, still trees there. there. I'm not sure that that is a destruction. Just north because of the, on the other shots, there were no trees anywhere. And that's what we're looking at. He's... he's uh, Mike, right turn up Mike's uh, the, uh, uh, mic. There we go. Let, let me break away here for just a second. Let's, let's go to what we have going on right now. I need to talk about a couple areas here. And I'm only going to talk about We're the areas that are, that are the most dangerous right now. I will tell you this life. storm is recycling now in southeastern Oklahoma County. Let's go to the uh, North Doppler and take a look at it. Uh, tornado warning does continue. It's south of Hera right now and to the southwest of McLeod. On the mm -hmm. top of someone's home, uh, this is the the path of, of devastation that this tornado uh, just wreaked. It touched down just before four o'clock Eastern, uh, just before three o'clock Oklahoma time, and, and you're looking at the uh, uh, path of destruction from this tornado that hit uh, and carved a carved a this path uh, south of Oklahoma City. Uh, this is the most disturbing picture to me though, Jake, where this is a school and and the school had took a direct hit. It, it truly did. Uh, the Plaza Towers Elementary School and there was another school that took a very hard hit, but there are people looking for well, I guess we would assume children or, or of course uh, the, the faculty. I'm not sure whether the school was left out or not and, and uh, we hope, we pray that they, they were somewhere else or at least underground because this is a devastating hit to a school and obviously schools, even when you and I we're going to school. We always had tornado drills. Even in Buffalo, New York, I had a tornado drill. Not the thinking we're ever going to get a tornado, but uh, the people here and they know what to do. They know where to put the children. Let's hope they're all safe. There were two schools hit, according to our affiliate KFOR in Oklahoma City. One of them was the Plaza Towers Elementary School. Again, we do not know if students were there. Uh, today. Right. We do not know if they were in the storm center. We, we, there is so much we do not know. Uh, so uh, it's unclear just because we're looking at, at wreckage of a school that that necessarily means anything one way or another. Uh, we're coming upon the hour uh, and I'm about to throw to well, Wolf Blitzer in the Situation Room, but for those just tuning in, you're looking at this horrific, horrific wreckage uh, from a tornado that touched down outside Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma City, uh, south into the town of Moore, Oklahoma, uh, a suburb of Oklahoma. 56,000 people live there. And you're looking uh, at, at one of the, the results of one of the most destructive tornadoes in recent memory. It just shredded parts of the Oklahoma City area. Uh, and now we're left for the images, left with the images of a desperate and frantic rescue effort, which are only just beginning in schools and homes and businesses that are completely gone. And for so many of these people, the hard work is only just beginning. Wolf Blitzer is in the Situation Room with continu continuing coverage. I'm Jake Tapper, and this has been The Lead. Mr. Blitzer. Jake, thanks very much. Uh, we're following the breaking news. Indeed, a massive twister ripping through the Oklahoma City area. Spotters on the ground have described it, get this, as two miles wide. And the first images are showing catastrophic damage. It's almost unbelievable what we're seeing right now. Uh, block after block after block of homes destroyed. Shocked residents hugging each other in the streets. You're looking at live pictures right now. Schools described as completely gone. This is an area with a significant population. Oklahoma City has a, is a city of more than 600,000. The greater metropolitan area, hundreds of thousands more. And this tornado ripping through that area. Only moments ago, and now there are more tornado warnings on the way. Nor NOAA's Storm Predictor Center, uh, Prediction Center is in Norman, Oklahoma, not very far away. The operations chief is Bill Bunting. He's on the line with us sir, right now. Bill, uh, update our viewers here in the United States and around the world. What's going on? Because these uh, horrific pictures of the damage and destruction are awful. 
That's right, Wolf. Our, our worst fears are becoming realized uh, this afternoon. We knew this was going to be a multi-day event, and in fact, we're seeing yet another day of strong tornadoes in populated areas. Uh, as I left to come over here, uh, the tornado was on the ground uh, doing damage. Um, we certainly hope everyone heeded the warnings, but it's a populated area, and uh, we just fear that uh, not everyone may have gotten the word, but we certainly hope that's the case. Because we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people potentially impact whole, whole blocks and blocks and blocks of populated areas destroyed. These pictures are, are unbelievably sad. That's right. You know, here in Oklahoma, we're used to tornadoes in the springtime, but by any measure, the past couple of days have just been extremely difficult. This tornado that hit about an hour or two ago, how, how significant is it? About two miles wide. What category was it? Do you know? We don't, Wolf. It's, uh, you know, the survey crews will have to get out and take a look at it. Uh, there's no doubt that it was a, a very, very strong tornado. And for the folks on the path, uh, we certainly hope that they knew that the severe weather was possible, activated their emergency plans. And I have to say for folks downstream or who are in the path of other storms that are developing, uh, this is a very dangerous situation. Have your plan ready to go. Activate it when storms are approaching to keep you and your family safe. So what do we anticipate? And that's your job to give us a forecast over the next hour or two. These storms are going to continue producing uh, additional tornadoes. Uh, they'll also produce some very, very large hail, perhaps larger than the size of baseballs. We're also concerned that there may be an enhanced and widespread damaging wind threat with storms as they merge together. And unfortunately, this is yet uh, another day of an event that will continue tomorrow from Texas up into the Mississippi and Ohio valleys and even continue in the middle uh, portion of the week over the Ohio Valley and into southern New England. So uh, as bad as today is, this is not over yet. What What's causing these tornadoes right now? Well, give us an explanation. Well, for most of the spring, uh, fairly cool air had covered much of the United States, and so we, we saw a season that started off pretty active in January and February, got relatively quiet in April, but as the, the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico began to send moisture uh, up into the southern and central plains and these upper-level disturbances have interacted with an increasingly unstable atmosphere, uh, we have seen tornadoes now begin to increase in frequency and unfortunately intensity and uh, climatologically. Smaller scale than this. Uh, but what they were doing yesterday. Uh, John, you did a great job just a few minutes ago for those folks who are just now joining us of moving down the tornado path. Can you do that one more time so that people who are familiar yeah. with the Moore area can see where that storm went and what it did? And you are so, so, so good about this area because you live down there. And I know that you fear for your family right now, but thank you so much for staying in the air and helping us out with these pictures because I think it's what our viewers need to see as the storm continues to move. Now, Mike's going to come back in just a moment with other areas that may be of concern to viewers where this tornado is heading, recycling and heading again. But if you'll take us back to where the tornado entered more and show us what you see and describe it again for us, I think that would be priceless. And you might might okay, give us a we go. might give us a cross streets too, John. Yeah, coming back to the left. All right, coming back to the left. We're going to have the uh, we're going to have Penn, and uh, in Oklahoma City, it's going to be uh, 134th Street. Yeah, that, uh, but hang on, come back to the right. Sorry. And right there, that intersection, that's Penn and 134th. And back to the left is there's a lot of scabbed landscape. Um, homes out here kind of on acreage so there's not the population density is not there so we're going to start right here at uh, Penn and 134th Street we're going to pan back to the right so in more this is going to be uh, 4th Street for you guys we're fixing to come into and as you can see all the houses right here primarily roof damage um, just to the north of that as you can see uh, right there uh, wait, there there used to be, uh, I'm drawing a blank here because I'm not used to seeing it without anything. Oh I believe gosh. there was a, a, a convenience store right there. And then just in the north side of that, that oval track, that's at the Orr family farm. So right there, we're going to travel down 100, uh, I'm sorry, we're going to travel down 149th Street here, which is going to be just south of, uh, just south of the uh, Warren Theater. We're in between 4th and uh, 19th Street. We're tracking along there. It's the new dicks that they built, the Target, the Home Depot. Um, we're now, coming is that, up this 
play are right those, here. Are those the, the, the buildings we see destroyed in right there? That was a Home Depot and a Target? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. That's, that, this right here, that's the uh, that's the Plaza Towers Elementary School. Um, the 19th Street, south of 4th Street, okay. uh, and we're fixing to cross Santa Fe. Um, if you guys are familiar with this area, there's like the uh, the golf course here on the south side of the road. Mm -hmm. All this where the house is burning at in that neighborhood that's just north of, uh, like there's a Dan McGinnis, a, a, like an Irish pub right there, just north of that. We're going to continue to go to the east uh, over several other schools and uh, homes that if travels go just to the left, just a bit. That's that first elementary school we showed you right there and then we'll back out and we'll continue to come. Now this, where we're coming to right now is just on the south side of of the War Warren Theater. This is going to be on uh, Telephone Road in between 4th Street. That's what? Yeah, we're, we're coming up on... Uh, so there's the Warren Road over road on that, yeah. In between 4th Street. There's the Warren right there. Yeah, right. If we're going to look to your left, Travis will pan back out, and uh, that's the uh, Norman Hospital right there. Right in front of that is going to be the uh, bowling alley, the AMC bowling alley, if you guys are familiar, right there. So in front it's of that gone. was, uh, yeah. I believe, it's yeah, it's gone. You still in see front the of that, that was there. a Century 21 office. To the left side of that, that was a bank. And now we're crossing uh, I-35. We're just south of Four Street, and we're continuing to see. This is another housing condition uh, that comes into the area. We're coming up to where more annexes property right here. They're putting a park in. We're crossing the railroad tracks now. We're still headed east. Bound. Okay. Um, we're coming behind the no, alternative school here and more. We're coming behind the neighborhood market, and we're fixing to cross Eastern. Just to the left is uh, uh, Eastern, right there on the left side of your screen is Eastern and 4th Street. The tornado just tracked just south of Eastern, and it's continuing uh, pretty much eastbound right now. The next building you're going to see in the top left of your screen is the Brink Junior. Uh, it tra it uh, came just to the south, or the, yeah, the south side of it. Just missed much it. Just trashed. Uh, I believe that's the gym or the the area where the kids do uh, um, athletics. Just in the top of the screen is Travis Pans out. We're going to show you the uh, that's the more auxiliary, the more public uh, office building where John, the. John, I hate to interrupt you. But I hate to interrupt you, Mike needs to come back on to warn people of these storms that are still developing. We'll come right back storms to you, Mike. And, and Linda, I'd like to point out, uh, uh, back on May 3rd, 8,100 homes damaged or destroyed, 1,040 apartment complexes damaged or destroyed. Uh, the, the injury count was 583, and the fatality count for the Bridge Creek Moore uh, tornado was 36 deaths. Now we don't know anything about those those statistics right there, the, the, the ones that really matter. But I think it's clear to say uh, uh, the 8,100 homes and 1,040 apartment com complexes, uh, this is clearly, clearly much, much more widespread and devastating as far as the damage. Uh, this tornado was much wider. It does appear to be uh, uh, likely an F5, it's difficult to say scientifically, likely an F5, but it looks like it is an F5. Uh, and it was a $1.2 billion storm on May 3rd, 1999. This, this is clearly much more uh, uh, massive in scope in terms of the damage. Geographical area, it's much, much larger. Let's go ahead and take a look at the storm tracker right now. Now, there are quite a few tornado warnings out. Uh, we have uh, Mike Bennett on this one. He does not see a tornado warning right now, but it is heading for Meeker and Prague, just to the north of Shawnee. It's just north of I-40, uh, near the Fire Lake Grand Casino right now. It'll track just north of the Shawnee Mall. That has a tornado warning on it right now. And also severe storms continue in the Midwest City area. Uh, those have some large hail with them, but right now no tornado with that. This one, Reed Timmer, we are, we are on in contact with our storm trackers throughout this coverage. And we have them on on the Gentners, we're in contact with them. Uh, this has had a tornado with it. It is still heading for, for Paul's Valley, Maysville, Paul's Valley, 